Hello and welcome to my presentation called An Exploratory Investigation of Glucocorticoids, Personality and Survival Rates in Wild and Rehabilitated Hedgehogs in Denmark. I'm Dr. Sophie Lund Rasmussen, or Dr. Hedgehog, and thank you for tuning in. The background for this study is that the populations of European hedgehogs are in decline all over Europe. Since 2020, they've had the status of vulnerable on the red list for Britain's mammals. So it's really important that we understand the causes for the decline so that we can improve the conservation initiatives directed at this species. The rehabilitation of orphaned and sick and injured wildlife followed by their release back into the wild is an important aspect of the conservation of wildlife in general and especially of hedgehogs. But does it really pay? Do juvenile hedgehogs hand raised in captivity have the same survival chances as wild individuals upon release? And do hedgehogs in care experience more stress than wild individuals? And if so, what can we do to limit this? So stress is the body's reaction to any change that requires an adjustment or response. It's completely natural. It's the fight or flight reaction, acute stress. But with wild animals placed in captivity, uh, which experience a novel or confined and unpredictable environment, including handling and close proximity to humans, that can cause stress. And chronic stress is known to have detrimental consequences that may affect the recovery process of a sick individual, for example, due to a reduction in immune responsiveness and body mass. Understanding the personality of wildlife is the biological approach to the study of behavior that intends to identify the mechanisms underlying and the evolutionary forces that maintains a certain variation in personality traits. So shy individuals will respond to unfamiliar objects or novel situations by fleeing or retreating or becoming cautious, quiet or inactive. Whereas bold individuals would show the opposite behavior, they would be moving towards or becoming active, exploring and investigating. So personality could play a role in the post-release success of captive red mammals. One example is by Bremner Harrison et al, where captive bred swift foxes released back into the wild uh, saw this variation because bold individuals got themselves into trouble and had a lower survival rate. So the aim of this study was to conduct an exploratory study on glucocorticoid levels in European hedgehogs from different age, group, age groups, locations, and backgrounds. And we wanted to quantify personality in these hedgehogs, uh, measures as shyness or boldness, and the possible effects of personality on the glucocorticoid levels in captivity and their post-release survival. And we wanted to test whether variables such as health status, age group, background, sex, personality, uh, and captivity influenced stress levels of European hedgehogs. And we, of course, want to use this knowledge to improve the rehabilitation and conservation of hedgehogs in general. So what we did was that we measured corticosterone uh, in the hedgehogs in saliva samples and fecal samples as well as cortisol, but we didn't get a very large uh, sample size and didn't add any further analysis to this. We used a total of 43 individual hedgehogs from three different research projects. The first treatment group was a pilot study at a hedgehog rehabilitation center with 10 adults. We also had a treatment group two consisting of 10 wild and 15 rehabilitated juvenile hedgehogs that were tested for personality. They were translocated and released into a new habitat wearing radio tags. The last treatment group was uh, based on a radio tracking study in 2014, uh, where we followed uh, three juveniles and took samples from five unknown wild individuals. So the treatment group two was based on testing the difference between wild and rehabilitated juvenile hedgehogs. Uh, 
So are rehabilitated individuals as capable uh, of surviving post-release as the wild individuals? Does it really pay to hand raise these orphaned hedgehogs? Because it takes a lot of effort and it's very expensive. They all spend one week in an outdoor enclosure. On day one, uh, they were exposed to a novel arena test to test their personality. On day three, uh, we did a novel object test. On day five, we did another novel object test, either introducing a ball into the enclosure or a badger set up with a badger teddy bear and badger feces to see how they reacted to these novel objects. On day six, they were radio attacked. On day seven, they were released into a suitable habitat, which they didn't know. There were two individuals at a time in each enclosure, two wild individuals in one enclosure and two hand-raised uh, juveniles in the other enclosure. We did novel arena tests when they were introduced to this novel environment, uh, the enclosure, where we measured how long it took for them to actually go and explore the different zones in the enclosure. Then we did the novel object tests, where we tested uh, how long it took for them to uh, exit their carrier or nest box and actually go and explore the novel object. So the results were that we measured glucocorticoid levels in 30, 43 wild caught individuals and rehabilitated individuals. The rehabilitated individuals and females had higher levels of fecal corticosterone metabolites compared to the wild individuals and males respectively. The rehabilitated individuals showed higher levels of saliva corticosterone than wild. And this is an overview of the results. So you see the saliva corticosterones here for the females and the males. And as you can see, the rehabilitated individuals showed higher levels compared to the wild ones. And for the fecal metabolites uh, of corticosterone, uh, you could also see that the wild and rehabilitated individuals uh, showed different levels. So, so the rehabilitated individuals had higher levels of uh, fecal corticosterone metabolites. We also compared the post-release survival and spatial behavior of 18 translocated juvenile hedgehogs. So that was eight hand-raised and 10 wild until their hibernation. And we also explored the possible effect on survival of differences uh, in the shy or bold behavior of their personality in 17 juvenile individuals. The personality test labeled 13 individuals as shy and 11 as bold. And the post-release survival was 57% for rehabilitated individuals up until their first hibernation and 50% for wild individuals. So basically we saw that uh, the personality differences were quite equal. We had almost the same number of shy and bold individuals and the post-release survival was also the same between wild and rehabilitated individuals. So we could conclude that neither background nor personality affected the post-release survival of these hedgehogs. And the higher levels of corticosterone observed in the rehabilitated individuals compared to wild hedgehogs calls for a consideration of the duration of admission to wildlife rehabilitation centers to reduce the stress levels in the patients because long-term stress can have detrimental effects. And we could just see that the rehabilitated ones had higher levels of stress hormones in their bodies. The hand-raised juveniles appear to have the same prospects as wild ones that grew up in the wild with their mother and uh, the personality does not seem to affect the post-release survival in hedgehogs. So it indicates that hand-raising of often, often juvenile hedgehogs is a relevant contribution to the conservation of this species. So we were not able to perform ACTH tests to validate the measures. Uh, so we don't have a baseline for stress hormone levels in, in hedgehogs because it requires a lot of permits, which we couldn't get. So this is only an exploratory study. 
So the rehabilitated individuals had higher levels of corticosteromes. And this indicates some level of stress in care and perhaps more stress when in captivity for a longer time period when you compare to the wild individuals. And perhaps also higher levels of stress hormones when they're moved during care, because the orphaned hedgehogs we tested uh, had been placed in, in captivity in small rabbit cages at the rehabilitation center where they were hand reared uh, until they were ready uh, for release. And, uh, and then they were released into these uh, enclosures before we translocated them back into the wild. And this may have contributed, all these shifts may have contributed to the higher stress levels. So what can we use this knowledge for? Well, we of course have to consider the effects of long-term stress in hedgehogs in captivity. So when rehabilitating hedgehogs, we should consider the duration of the rehabilitation process. So as hedgehogs are wild animals, it's important to avoid captivity whenever possible. Could some of these individuals actually be helped in the garden uh, with a close monitoring and supplementary feeding? And we should, of course, consider the length of the rehabilitation process as it may lead to increased corticosterone levels in the hedgehogs. And the soft release, so moving the individuals to the new enclosures, may have caused increased corticosterone le uh, levels. The published paper can be downloaded open access uh, via this link. I would like to acknowledge all my collaborators and uh, the funding bodies and the facilities used and all the volunteers helping out uh, for this study. And if you want to read more about my research, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, ResearchGate. And if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me and I'll be ready to respond to any questions you might have. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>